don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So today um, I am in the need of some more thank you cards. Um, all the ones that I've previously made have now all gone to various people uh, around the world, the globe. Um, so I need to make some more. So what I've done is I've rigged through some of my old stamp sets, some of my older, older stamp sets, um, to kind of grab some inspiration of what I want to do to create some thank you cards. Um, and at my eyes lighted on this little beauty. So this one is so old now, look, even the plastic started to go brown around the edges. Um, so this is one of the very, very early Tim Holt ones. In fact, it's CMS 024, 24. So it's only the 24th set that he ever did with Stampers Anonymous. He's now on 300 and something or other, if not higher than that already. Um, so I thought these little beauties, these little winged things, which is what it's called, I thought I would use these for my um, thank you cards. So um, what I've done is I've gone through my 12 by 12 paper collection and I've pulled out some bits and pieces, some scraps, some old pieces of uh, design that have just been, you know, sitting there, not doing anything, bits of scraps, um, just strips. And I've kind of pulled together a collection of bits and bobs um, that I think kind of all, not necessarily go together, but they have a similar kind of colour theme to them. So what I'll do is I'll turn over to my overhead camera and, and I'll talk through or we'll just have a chat and a craft and we'll just walk, uh, walk and talk through the creation of these thank you cards. Right, so I'll just move that. That's the clearer shot of that stamp set. So those are the two little uh, fairy girl kind of things that we're going to be using. Um, so to start off with then, I've created six... Um, card bases. Now what I normally do, I like to create top fold cards, but this time, just stepping out of my comfort zone a little bit, I've done two top fold cards out of the set that I'm going to create. And the other four are going to be traditional side opening card sets. And these are, um, in UK, European or Australian sizes would be a six in American size I think you call them A2 size. Um, so those are my card bases that I've already pre-prepared so I'll put those to one side out of the way. What I've also done is I've cut some card base or some front bases um, out of a piece of old scrap card stock. So this yellow colour um, I believe um, is a very, very old sheet, or a couple of old sheets, of stamping up um, crushed curry, um, which I've still got, I think, half a pack of, um, back from the days when I was a stamping up demo. Long, long, long time ago. Um, I think I got this first time round. I know they brought it back again later, but anyway, I digress. So I've cut um, six pieces of that, slightly smaller, than my card base. So only about an eighth of an inch or four millimetres smaller height and width wise, um, which gives you a gap of two millimetres all the way around or about an eighth of an inch all the way around. Um, but it doesn't really matter. As long as you've got kind of like a white border to finish off with, you're okay. Whether it's two millimetres, three millimetres or four millimetres, nobody's really gonna care. Uh, and it won't make the slightest bit of difference to how you create your cards. So put those to one side and these are the bits of scraps that I've pulled from my collection. I'm not really sure where half of it's come from or what, what sets they've come from. Um, I believe these strips were from a Stamperia set, um, I think Voyage Fantastique, I think it was called, a bit of a steampunky set. So there were bits of strips that were left over from that. I've got a sheet of kind of rusty, russety kind of brown craft core, Tim Holtz coordinations. So it's craft so that if you scruff it with 
um, a sanding block or something like that if you emboss through your machine then you know that does sand back as well. I've got a sheet of um, map now, I think this is from a Tim Holtz 12x12 set don't ask me which one can't tell you because I always lose the front um, they always fall off this piece da -da, it says Jungle Gypsy so marionsmithdesigns.com by Marion Smith Jungle or is it young okay I'll read what that says anyway faux pas it says it's a double sided set kind of bright don't want to use that side bit too girly for me he says but I like the colours on this side I like the, the, uh, the turquoises I like the oranges it kind of goes with that and it kind of goes with that and it kind of goes with the colours that are on there too so kind of colour coordinating and then just to throw a curveball in I've got a sheet of this which is some really kind of like distressed florally it's a single sided one uh, and this is, it says Rome Antique Collection, from, oh, from Prima, um, 2012. So it's a kind of old one. It's even had the price scribbled out. Look, I think I got this sheet in Happy Mail from somebody um, a while ago. So if I do use any of this, it will only be a little. But that's what I'm going to be doing with most of these. I'm going to be layering, and I'm going to be just using fragments, which is why I'm actually going to start tearing um, all these bits of paper up and I'm only going to really need six because I'm only going to put one piece on each of the cards so four this is going to be five and six so I've got six pieces of that in various different sizes so that can now get put away again um, the map the map um, let's just tear that right down the middle I'm afraid North America is going to get put to one side and we're going to use a little bit of Europe so let's just tear up those bits put those two bits to one side and we'll tear this up into six fragments as well so let's just tear that down the mid and then we'll go right the way across the UK we'll go through Spain Mm, 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 mm. And we might keep the bottom of that so there's three there get rid of that bit and then we'll just divide Africa kind of equal bits was that Africa Russia there you go so we divide Russia into three pieces as well so we've got six bits there one two three four five six um, and then I'm going to just tear some of these bits up so we've got that bit there not really all that bothered so I've only got five of their look oh, that's rubbish so what we'll do is we'll do that so we'll do two of those that there we'll keep that bit there and then we'll take away one two three four there and we'll add two of that and let's get rid of three of those since I haven't got enough to do all three and then we'll add so I've got three and three eighth and eighth so they can get put away deal with those Scrappy bits, scrappy bits, and again we'll do the same thing again um, out there, and then we'll tear those lengthways so we've got horizontals. Get rid of that bottom bit, and shall we keep the full length of that? Just offering that up to the actual card base so we'll keep six of those stripey bits 
so that can get put away. So we've got, so far we've got stripy bits, bits with words on, we've got maps and we've got some florally bits. Keep that to one side. And then for this sheet, I'm going to tear just along there. And then, hello young man. Good afternoon. Oh, this looks interesting. Yes, I'm doing tearing. Oh, lovely. I'm doing um, inane banter. Haha. <laughs> We're just chatting while I'm while I'm just tearing. Well, I'm just no real about. aim whatsoever. I've no plan at all as to what I'm going to use these bits for. So I'm, I'm just going to well. yeah. So just tear some of that bit off the bottom. Okay, so we've got these two kind of postcardy things. So I'll tear that down. Not a real word, postcard thing. Well, it is now. Mm. So we'll have half of that one. Talking of postcard things, I'm going to the post office in a little while. Right, okay. That means you want some money from me, doesn't yes. it? Right, I've just got to finish the parcels. Right, let's just tear that into two. Get rid of that top bit. I just like the texture on that. Um, and then... in sending out all his website orders today. All his t-shirts um, are, are all going out. He's very excited. Okay. So we've got one, two, three, four, five of those, four of those. Let's tear up some of these just to mix it up a little bit. So we've got a little bit of a face on that one, a bit of a face on that one with a heart, like those. Get rid of that. A little bit of a birdie on that one. A bit of a birdie on that one. No, 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 a bit of birdie on that one as well. Let's just rip that bit up. So I've got those. So I might just mix and match those. That really doesn't say much, does it? Or show much, but it's got some nice writing on it. There. Okay, so keep that craft call back for the time being. Um, that'll just pop everything down onto the floor there, into my big storage area, otherwise known as the floor. Okay, that bit can go as well, don't need that. So we've got loads of scrappy bits that we're going to work with, I think. So those are the map bits. Let's just separate all those out. So we've got map bits. We've got flowery bits. We've got stripy bits. We've got wordy bits. We've got kind of graphically bits and then we've got bits of nice texture. Let's lump all that all together. So we've got some decent piles to start kind of layering onto our card fronts. Like so. Right, so now we've got those. Let's just move those out to the side a second and then bring in what I've done with the stamps. Now, I've stamped these out already because, you know, that's what we do. Um, so they've all been stamped out onto scraps of watercolour cardstock. It's hot pressed watercolour cardstock, so it's smooth. That one's a bit dirty, but it doesn't matter. Because um, what I'm going to do with these, I'm going to colour these in. I'm going to watercolour these in, in sympathetic colours to the fragments that we've already got. And then I'm going to place these down, I'll cut these out, and then stick these down onto the layers that we create. So I've already stamped those, so I didn't think you wanted to stand there or sit there and watch me stamping out six times with the stamp press because, you know, watching paint dry and all that. But just as a kind of experiment, I did play <laughs> with um, some Distress Ink watercolours. I'm not going to use these. Um, these were just quick once I'd stamped out, I actually photocopied them um, just so I could have a play uh, with that colouring, just so I would, you know, know exactly, well, not exactly, but know where I was kind of going. God, blimey. So after that bit of rambling, 
So what I've also done is I stamped another one out and I cut it out, particularly the one that sat down. So I could kind of position it down so I would know kind of whereabouts I need to put something for her to sit on because she has, she is sat down. The other one stood up but she sat down so we are going to need to put some kind of ledge for her to sit on around about a third of the way or two thirds of the way down which is why I cut and did that as well. I did experiment with some um, coloured pencils as well but I don't like the, the effect that you get with a coloured pencil so yeah she'll end up in the bin probably. Okay so without further ado and this probably will get stuck on last um, but I'm only going to need three of the ones going across there maybe one that goes down at the bottom for the other one to stand on but we need to ground, ground them somewhere but we can do that with other stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start just by grabbing the first one and I'm going to just start layering it and I don't really care whether it goes over the edge of the sheet because I know exactly where uh, I'll need to cut then on the edge so it doesn't really matter whether we go over as long as we kind of like go over and cover pretty much um, all of the front at some point with what we've got uh, and I might need to get some more because I probably haven't got enough to actually cover the entire of the front and layer and collage up. Probably won't have enough. See, these are the things that you don't think about before you even start. So let's bring in that other big piece up there and start tearing before anybody says, oh, I've got to tear the butterflies up. I'm not, because they can come in useful for other stuff. Other stuffs. So let's tear that. Tear that. And tear that and see if we can start to layer. Okay, so I uh, know we should have got some different glue. Let's grab some of this Yoohoo stuff. And then we're going to go that way. Let's go right the way across the page. Layer that. And then bring in a bit of that writing. So, and then we'll get another piece of that, just offset that a little bit and then we'll have a nice bit of that little rosy thing on there. And I'm not bothered whether any of these edges or corners um, pull up, that'll be fine. Ooh, actually, we're not really going to need that there, are we? So we can probably get away with overlapping that there before that dries. Put that one there like that because we've got that that's going to sit. I'm just auditioning that piece and she can sit just like that on there. And yep, I appreciate it's not wide enough, but that's okay. Alright, so let's stick that down like that. Because we've still got 
some bits over here that we can stick on. That pretty much cover those areas. But we could even do it that way, couldn't we? Just so it's all kind of random. Okay, so we can see the back, we can see it's all covered. We need to let the glue dry and I'm going to do the same thing for the other five. So she can sit on there just like that. Perfect. You'll see. I have got some kind of idea in my head of what I kind of want it to look like at the end, but how we get there, eh, we'll just have to wait and see. Right, I will carry on, put that one to one side, number one, grab the next piece and start layering all the bits and pieces up like I did with the others. And we'll see where this one takes us. Okay, so while those backgrounds are drying, and which is going to take a little bit of time because I've used spirit glue rather than matte medium or whatever, Mod Podge, I'm going to start on painting or colouring um, some of my little fairy girls. So let's just put those to one side because I'm going to do them kind of randomly and I'll just bring in the colours that I've got. So I'm going to use um, my Distressing Minis for my palette. Now the reason I've chosen those colours is because we've got pinks, browns, greens, a little bit of blue um, and some yellows in there. So that's still wet. Um, so that's pretty much what I'm going to use for the same kind of colour palette that I'm going to put on, front, on the top. So to start off with then, let's just start off with this one. I'm going to grab some fossilised amber. There you go, so you can see it. A little bit on the mat. Some water <coughs> from the water brush. Got some kitchen towel, just so I've got something to dab off. And I'm just going to lightly mix some of that in. And I'm going to go into the wings. And of course, the beauty of this is, is that it doesn't matter whether you go outside the line because I'm going to cut it out anyway. I know. Cheating already. But it's got to be done. That's my excuse anyway. So, fairy wings. Darker on those inside bits. And then just <coughs> feather it out a little bit. like so and then I can just clean that off and then the hat I'm going to use cracked pistachio 
scoop that up and then step from the bottom and just work my way up. So a bit darker towards the bottom and then a little bit lighter towards the top. Just nice and gentle. Don't want too strong a colour. And then we'll grab the Victorian velvet, put a little bit just on the mat. Put that one out of the way for a second. Just get a little bit of that Victorian velvet, really, really light amount. A little bit of the yellow. Excuse me in the background. <laughs> yep. All right. <coughs> and then I'm just going to very lightly just go over the face and the neck with a mixture of that yellow and the Victorian velvet, which gives me a kind of um, Western Caucasian skin tone. There you go. And then just on top, I think we'll grab that um, a little bit of the abandoned coral and then I'm going to do little 76, clean that. I'm just cleaning my brush off camera and then the dress I think we're going to do um, in the same colour again, this time cracked pistachio. That's, I've still got some out, haven't I? So we'll just go all the way down, leave the neck, and then just go around that kind of dress area. And then go back with that fossilised amber and just do a kind of frill around her neck. And then I'm also going to do her socks. But only lightly. And then just go a little bit darker. Just in that area there. Just to give it a little bit. And then just to finish off, a little dab of Rusty Hinge. And then I'll just go a bit too much. Just take that off. Too much water on the brush. There we go. Just do a hair. Dab lightly with the brush. With the kitchen roll, just to get rid of any excess water. These envelopes are very rustly. They are, aren't they? They are, aren't they? They're rather a lot of parcels, though. Yes, <laughs> okay, so that is pretty much just one of them. So I now need to, I mean obviously this one's going to be slightly different. I'll tell you what, let's do that one as well really, really quickly. I've already got the colours out. So let's do fossilised amber crown. Remember, I'm going to be cutting these out anyway. And then we'll do pistachio wings. We need a little bit more of that. There we go. And then just clean that off quickly and then I can go back in with that kind of fleshy tone that I created earlier and then just lightly Go over her face. And 
then just do our arms quickly, our hands quickly. A little bit of darkness just down that one side under the chin a little bit and that's it for her uh, unless I can just get a little bit of colour in those bubbles at the top. Now I know they've got numbers in, I don't know whether anybody's ever noticed but they have got numbers in and then just because a very very light amount of yellow and I'm just going to go over them words Yeah, that's going to be it for her. So what I'll do now, because I've now got both, I haven't really put any blue in that one. I will alternate the colours slightly for the others. So, but they'll all be fairly kind of similar. So I'll carry on and do the others, and then I'll be back. So what we've got here, a little bit of red on that one. Let's go. Right into the crown. And then I think for the wings, we'll do yellow again. Okay, so like I said, I'll finish these off and then I will join with you once I've finished painting or adding the tints to the rest. TTFN, as to her. Okay, so they're all painted. They just need to dry a little bit now. So I'm just going to give them a little bit of help. And then once I've got everything dry and my backgrounds are dry, I'll be right back. But if the backgrounds are taking too long to dry, what I'll probably end up doing is cutting these out first. They're almost dry, but not quite. Almost, but not quite. So I'll probably end up cutting these out if they're not done, just to save on a little bit of time. So, give these a couple of minutes. Okay, so all of my background pieces, the collage or montage, if you like, um, are all dry now, even though they're a little bit shiny there. That's just the glue. It, it is all dry. So all I have to do now is just to trim off the excess from the back. So this is the reason why I like to use different colored card. It's so I can see exactly where I need to cut so just trim off all that excess. I'm using obviously a scalpel, but whatever you want to use, if you're going to create something similar to this, is obviously up to you. Right. So there is that bit. I just have to now repeat the same process for the other five pieces. So I'll do that and I have already cut out my little fairy folk. Let's just get rid of those bits and lift that cutting mat out of the way. And you can see, there we go. So all six of them are already cut out, ready to go. So I'll cut out the other five of these and then I will be right back. Okay, so all six pieces are now lovely and trimmed out and all ready for the next phase, which is, of course, now that I've got that lovely background, I'm now going to cover it all up with some gesso. So I'm just going to open up my pot of gesso. I really need to clean around the rim, don't I? Get a brush. That will do. Grab some gesso and just start painting over the whole lot. And I've totally, totally ruined everything. All 
those lovely colours have just disappeared into the background. Never to be seen again. Well, not really. Because as soon as this dries, they'll all come back again. So, what I'll do now is I'll just do the rest of them. So, a thin coat of gesso over the top. Drying very, very quickly actually. Just grab a little bit of water. That's better. Just get some water on this one I've already done. Evens it out a little bit. A little bit of water. There we go. I'm just going to repeat the whole process, the same process, over the whole of the six. Okay, so all of the backgrounds are pretty much dry now, but you can see, even though I've put the gesso over the top, you can still see some of that pattern showing through underneath, which is exactly what I wanted. So as you can see, I've got out some of my Distress Crayons, so I'm just going to start going around um, with, I've got Rusty Hinge, I've got Fossilised Amber, I've got Peacock Feathers, and I've got Peeled Paint. So those are the four kind of colours that I think are in there. There might be one or two of the little colours that I add in, like Vintage Photo, in a little while, but I wanted just to start adding in a little bit of colour so I'm just going to rub a little bit where the joins of the bits of paper are. I'm going to do that on quite a few of them, not all over, but just where kind of like the joins of the paper are. Just to add a little bit of dividing or definition lines on some of those. On there, and then not many on that one. So that's the rusty hinge. Now I'm going to take my finger and I'm just going to start to blend that in and start building up the texture. I'm going to do the same on each one now. So when I've done them I'll just put them to one side.
Okay, so that's done with the rusty hinge. I'm now going to come in with the peacock feathers and do exactly the same thing again, but this time I'm going to overlap a few of the colours Do the same thing. Next up, fossilised amber.
and then finally with that peeled paint. I'm not adding huge amount of this one. I may just do this one as I'm going along. And then finally, vintage photo. So I'll finish off doing all these and then I'll join you when I've done all six. Okay so all of the colour dividers if you like have been added on so I just want to add a little bit of kind of like texture in the background so I've used or I'm going to use the a mini specimen stencil from TCW. So this kind of like bit in particular and these bits here which I really really like. Um, so I'm going to just add some detailing. I'm just going to use some archival ink. Vintage photo. What did you say? Victorian photo there. But that's not what it's called. So just rub a little bit of that. Not going through very well. I think my ink pad is on its last legs to be honest. It's better. And then a little bit of this down at the bottom. Just to add a little bit of interest and you could even just add in some of those little butterflies. 
just as a kind of watermark in the background. So I'm going to carry on and add some of those to each one. Struggle to get it through. Turn that one around a little bit that way. carry on doing this and I'll do it to all six and then I will be right back. Okay so now all of them have got those um, the vintage photo stenciling through that mini um, specimen stencil. Now this has pretty much had it now um, it's falling to pieces, I've got bits falling out of it, so it may be time to invest in a new one. So put that to one side. I've now got this, um, I can't remember what this is called, dot fade, possibly, can't remember, it's that old. Um, and I'm also going to add some of these now using black soot. So black soot. Again, archival. So I'm just going to whip those through, just to add a few little spots just into the background for no other reason than it just helps to um, pull it all together and that will do. So I will do the same to the other five and then I will be right back. Okay so all six have now got those little dots in one thing I just want to do to finish off is just add some white splatters. So actually I could do this all in one go, couldn't I? They're lovely. Well there will be once they're finished. That so nice. let's grab some white paint. Dear. I know. Here we go. Clean white. A little bit of water. Should, I, is... put, should I put my rain mac on? <laughs> right, so this is the same gesso that I used earlier. And all I'm going to do is just now just add splatters. Do you remember our friend once she did it the wrong way and hits herself in the face with it? Yeah, I'm not going to say who because people actually will probably know who she is. Yes, they will, but it's funny. Mentioning no names, Linda. <gasps> anyway. <laughs> she laughed about it. She did. She? she had no choice, really. Okay, so adding the white splatters just helps pull everything together and kind of unifies the whole set, if you like. I think we're in our water there, I think. A little bit more. That's it. There's some bigger ones. That's it. Okay. I now need to leave those to dry and then when they are dry I'll be right back and obviously I've had to tidy up. Okay so everything is now dry and you can see now that I've put, I haven't glued them down yet but I've actually just put them over the top and you can see now how the colours actually go better, they're not quite so jarring and I know I've covered over most of the papers that are underneath, but you can still see the writing coming through, the pattern coming through, um, just in the background, which is perfect. So it's just been knocked back, but now isn't quite so prominent. So all I need to do for this lot, before I can mount them on the front of my card bases, is just to glue them down. So that's all I'm going to do now, is just grab some of that spirit glue, providing I've got some left. There we go, and just run a little bead all the way around. I'm not particularly bothered about getting it 
all over the back just so long as it does hold everything in place and then I'm just going to find the bits on there let's see that one and I'll sit that right in the middle just on that little shelf of paper that we put across the middle just hold that down just like that and I'm just going to repeat the same process for all six of the little winged things little fairy folk so I shall glue those on stick them all down and then I'll be right back of course I'll be having to put just a tiniest bit of glue just on those little ends of the crowns that's why I like about this particular glue because it's got a real nice kind of fine point applicator mm. there we go I'll just do this one so you can see that I've done one of each of the two characters if you like and then and I'll nip off and do the rest it is actually the next day for me obviously it's only just a few minutes for you you're not very well today are you? no I'm not somebody's I'm dying <laughs> so, a tad dramatic I think yeah, I've got cold yeah I can't have flu because I had the jab well that might be what it is because you've had the flu jab People, people over a certain age in the UK get them free, don't they? Yeah, in the late twenties. That's right. Very late twenties. Okay, so those two are stuck down. I'll go off and do the other four, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so all my little fairy creatures are stuck down onto the fronts, and I'm just going to load up my vintage photo distressing and I'm just going to go around the edge of each one just to kind of get rid of that kind of raw edge on each one just to add a little bit more grunge if you like so I'll just quickly whip over all six of those and then when I've done I'll be back to stick them down onto the card bases. Just another step in the, <laughs> the long road to construction. These have taken a little bit longer than the ones that I've done in the past. I mean, I've had to wait for the glue and everything to dry, but hey ho. Sometimes you've just got to roll with the punches. Okay, so I've gone around all of the edges, just darkening those up, but if you notice the red liner tape, I've also gone around and added some red liner tape to the backs of each of the card fronts, and I'm just removing the tape now. So this red liner tape is very, very strong and extremely sticky, um, kind of like construction tape, but it doesn't give you any wiggle room at all. So what I'm doing is I'm just quickly running over the top with a glue stick. That's just going to give me a second or so kind of play time just to manoeuvre and get it into position. Hopefully before it grabs. Like that and then just push down and then your card base or your card front is stuck down onto the card base so it's just that tiny tiny little bit of wiggle room that you've got just to get it stuck down so now that you've seen me do that one I'm going to go away and do the other five and then when that's done or stuck I'll be right back. But this can be fiddly, a little bit fiddly.
Okay, so a little bit of a tip for you. If you're working with um, multimedia, multimedia, mixed media um, card fronts and the, the paper's a little bit wobbly once you've dried it and you're adhering them to the front of card bases, then a good tip is just to put a pile of heavy books or something just on top for maybe about half an hour or so and that well that usually kind of flattens them all out enough for you to be able to work on them so these are the six all now stuck down to the card bases ready just for that final kind of um, almost final kind of push so all I'm going to do is just add a little bit of Stabilo or pencil just towards the bottom and a little bit of shadow a little bit of water just to kind of create a little bit of kind of three dimension as to where they stood that will do. So that's that one. I'll just do the same thing on each one. Just a real small amount. Doesn't need to be a lot. Just the lightest of touch. Just add a little bit of shadow on that bottom and here I'll do that just about where my little character is sitting. Just kind of create a little bit of a ledge. And that will do. Just a real kind of subtle thing. Doesn't need to be a lot. And I'm just following the line of the paper. Okay, so just to finish off, I've quickly printed off on the computer a little panel just for the inside of the card that just says, thank you very much. Perfect for the inside for these little thank you cards. And all I'm going to do is just grab one of my um, little tape runners, just open up the inside, just place it in, kind of center it. And only glue it at the top just so you've got a little bit of something on the inside of each of the cards just so you can quickly write on, sign it put a little greeting and then you're done that's pretty much it so I've just got those last two to do tape runners Ooh. that's it it's just about to catch. You can always tell. There we go. And then the last one. So that's it, all six cards finished, done, dusted, all different but all kind of the same. All ready to be put in stock, I'll team those up with some probably craft card envelopes or craft envelopes, let's see if I've got just a couple kicking about, there we go 
clean those up with those and then I've got a little stack of thank you cards just waiting to go out as and when the need arises. Grab three more. One, two, three. There we go. Done. And again, like I said, if you wanted to, you could just put those underneath um, something really, really heavy. A couple of books, just to kind of flatten them out, let their own weight, just leave them overnight if you want to. At least you know that they're going to be nice and flat and ready to send out. There you go. <laughs> So that's it from me, hope you've enjoyed watching that, if you have please remember to give it a thumbs up, share the video with your friends and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video or from me for now, I'll see you all again very very soon and thank you very much. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. Thank you.